All right, uh, season seven. Uh, That's very exciting. Welcome back for another season. So, what's what's in store for your characters? They don't tell us. They never <laughs> tell us. Every week, we just have to read the script and find out what we're gonna do. I think we're having quadruplets. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely having a baby. I think at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, we definitely know it's gonna be a girl. Yes, we do. We know it's gonna be a girl, mm -hmm. which is probably hell for you, right? Two of us. Oh. Two of us. One of him. Nonsense. <laughs> of course, I'd love to have a young fellow to throw the ball around with. <laughs> oh, or he could be a girl throwing around the ball with that. You never oh, know. Oh, they're not as good. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Nice. Just the father that was just... <laughs> Listen. But uh, I'm, I'm hearing there are a, lot, a few storylines that may involve the baby names. Um, what baby name would you give uh, the baby girl if you could? Agnes, personally. Janet. Agnes or Janet? That's Roberta. <laughs> Bertha. <laughs> Lupe. I like Lupe. <laughs> Lupe. Mm -hmm. It's got some that. flavor. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm curious in terms of um, the way you approach your characters now compared to day one. Uh, is there a big difference now for you in how you approach your character in terms of comfort level and so on? Um, well, I would say we're probably much more comfortable together after all those years, although it really felt easy from the beginning. It didn't really ever feel like there was a getting to know you period. I mean, I think we kind of clicked from the beginning. Um, we're like the only people from the original pilot <laughs> of the show. We've actually been doing this for 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> he and I have been doing it for 10 years. Everyone else has been doing it for seven. Um, yeah, I think it's easy. I think that we have um, a nice sort of adolescent relationship, which is always good for comedy. She can be a very adolescent. Yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it doesn't, it seems like these characters, I don't know, in our sleep sort of now, that just writes I, itself. I think that maybe the thing that has developed is, like in the beginning it was a lot of jokes and I feel like now maybe their relationship is a little more you, you see why they're together, because they kind of eviled me up a little bit. They kind of dirtied me up and kind of cleaned him up, and now we sort of meet in the middle of the dark side a little. So they took her, they took what she had to offer as far as, you know, naturally being yes, evil. as a and person. And what they've said, mm -hmm. let's capitalize on <laughs> let's this. Let's incorporate that. Let's use it. Why are why we not? not using that? Mm -hmm. And I think it was a smart move on their part. It's good. I mean, playing on your strengths, right? I mean, Absolutely. definitely. And they saw that he's not so bright, so they said, all right, let's dumb down the character. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, oh, the phone. <laughs> well, that's good. But uh, speaking again on day one, I'm always very interested to know, especially when you guys have had such a longevity terms of a, of a series, if you had the opportunity to step back in time and talk to yourself like, right before you start this series, what advice would you give yourself? Don't do it. Don't do it. It'll Careful. never last. It'll, yeah. <laughs> It'll never last. <laughs> yeah, so it's just short. Yeah. And what would be a message to the fans who, you know, are, are somewhat frustrated with not knowing exactly when the series always airs, but they love you guys and they want to see you guys on a more fixed, um, on a fixed schedule. What, what would you say to them? You it's, would. I, I mean, it's so funny because I don't really think that happens. I feel like our fans find us literally whenever, wherever we air. I mean, they will find us on the web. They'll find us wherever. And I don't. It's odd. I feel like television's changing. You know, it's been changing for the last five, ten years. So it's not really. Oh, it's Tuesday night. I watch TV. You know, so I feel like our fans find us wherever. Because we've I certainly think. been moved around a few times. <laughs> I mean, come on, I think our fans' frustrations have to be less than ours. <laughs> what the hell? And we're like, well, do we have a job this year or yeah, not? I know. <laughs> I got four kids to put through college. Let me know if we're working or not. And try not to do it at the very last minute. <laughs> oh, you're going to do it at the last minute again. Thanks. So far, so good, right? So far, so good. We are the lucky ones. And uh, any guest stars you would love to get? We're working on uh, Matt Damon, yeah, Reese and, Witherspoon, uh, Liam Neeson, Meryl Streep. Um, I like that uh, Daniel Day Lewis fella, and oh, I think that if we sure, absolutely, and uh -huh. if we find the, if we find the right role for him, I'm not sure that he can do comedy. It might be tough. We could. Yeah, coach it's really him. rough. We could coach. We'll see it how It is rough what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> People serious. watch it and they're like, it looks no, that easy. looks easy. <laughs> not not so easy. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> speaking of not being easy, uh, comedy in itself now, especially, has, as you said, has evolved. TV has evolved. How do you feel comedy on TV 
has evolved, especially compared to some of the new shows coming out and also some of the classic shows such as your own. Wow. Well, I think TV is always about the writing. I mean, not to discount, you know, the amazing brain surgery that we do in our jobs, but I think TV is always about the writing. So whether it's TV 50 years ago or TV last week, it's to me, it's always how it's written. I'm going to be think. brutally honest. <laughs> Please do. Uh, I mean, there's so much more. TV has so much more to offer than it once did. I don't think that the uh, four camera show is going to go away, but when you look at the half hour, the half hour comedies that are single camera, they're the product of 50 hours of single camera. They're much more nuanced, and I think it's easy to put something that's you know fully sharp together. And we're the product of three and a half hours in front of a live audience, and I think it's but I fun. Think but an it's energy. A, I mean, I think there's a different like it's energy, a different energy though, yeah. which I think lends itself better to comedy. So I think a lot of times in single camera. Sometimes. Sometimes. I think when it's done its best, it's... Yeah. And if you were king and queen for a day and could give your characters any storyline you wanted, what would it be? Wow. Not this week's? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what would we do? <laughs> I would definitely... Oh, I know what I would do. Okay, this is what I would do. Okay. I would definitely do a Fifty Shades of Grey episode <laughs> where I'm reading Fifty Shades of Grey, you see it on the nightstand, and you think, excellent, this sounds great. So I come in, and you've got the whip and the whole thing, and I'm like, no, no, no. My <laughs> fantasy is that I'm the dominatrix, and you are my submissive. So then you have to wear, like, the headgear with the red ball, and you got to wear, like, leather panties and stuff. I, I'm not even going to come up with something. I like this idea. <laughs> That's the show. I love it. Any chance to get you in, like, leather Speedo? That's my... Well, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing later? Take a look here. See? <laughs> my underdrawers.